Great to see you again in this new session. In this session, I will talk about the PMI knowledge areas. We look at the knowledge areas in the life cycle. We have an overview of the different knowledge areas and their main processes and outputs. And at the end, I will talk a little bit about the principle of tailoring, which is also something very important because uh, typically when you look at the PIMBOK, this is a model made for very large projects. But it's clear that when we have smaller projects, it's not worth the effort. It would be too expensive to include everything. So tailoring is about how can we adjust all those rules, all those processes to have smaller projects that can be managed properly without any overkill. We've seen this graph already before. Eh? We have the 10 knowledge areas that we will be talking about. We see that they are linked to the different process groups. And then we look at the process or the project life cycle, where we look at starting the project, organizing and preparing, carrying out the work and ending the project. So basically that's the link between the process and the project life cycle. When we look at the project management process, we talk about what we call process groups. We have initiation, planning, execution, monitoring, control. And at the right hand side, we see in fact, an overview of the different processes that are being conducted during those different steps. And we talk about the knowledge areas and the knowledge areas, when you see the circle or the square, the rectangle with the dotted circle around it, these are what we call integration processes or integration uh, parts that are part of the integration knowledge area. Basically what this is doing, this is just guiding you through the different process steps that have to be done. And the integration step provides you the final result. For example, when we look at planning, the integration of planning will give you the project management plan. Now, what we have to do and what has been done in this graph is linking the different groups and knowledge areas. We will see in the next table that for every process group, different processes and knowledge areas are providing processes to these groups, these process groups. Uh, what we see here, we have, first of all, the knowledge areas. And we only start from four, which is the fourth chapter in the PIMBOK. That's why, why we have four here. We have the knowledge areas in the vertical first column and in the horizontal row, we have the different process groups. And we see, for example, for project integration management, we see initiation, we develop the charter. We will find another process there. But in planning, we see that we have all those different elements that we are working on. In the execution, executing process group, we have direct and manage the project work, manage the knowledge, uh, monitoring control, perform integrated change control, which is part of the monitoring controlling process group, and finally closing. So in this table, you can see what work has to be done during which planning groups, uh, process groups, sorry. And basically we can identify very logically how we go through the project step by step. Here we have cost, quality, uh, resource management and communications management. There is nothing in the initiation group here, nothing in the closing group. If you look at the table properly, you will see that the planning process group has processes from all the knowledge areas. And this is the last one. So we have initiation. We see we have to identify stakeholders, very important. When we are looking at stakeholder management, uh, we identify already the stakeholders at the beginning and the closing process group has nothing here. So basically you see how processes, how knowledge areas are linked to the project management process groups. A quick overview of the PIMBOK 6th uh, edition. We have chapters 1 to 3, which are introduction, product, project environments and the role of the project manager. And then we see the different chapters with the different knowledge areas. We have chapter four, integration management, chapter five, scope management, chapter six, schedule management, 
and then we continue with cost management, quality management, resource management, communication management, risk management, procurement management, and stakeholder management. So basically, these are the different knowledge areas. Let's have a quick look what we are going to do in those different knowledge areas, because it's important to know. Project integration management, uh, we have, um, let's say, a very large uh, knowledge area. We have different elements that we are going to look at. We're looking at the integration of the different elements. So uh, 4.1 is develop the project charter. It's describing what processes have to be completed in order to develop the charter. We have the de develop project management plan. Here we are talking about the planning. Uh, what are the different elements we have to integrate? Eh? That's why we call it integration management. Direct and manage project work, it's the execution. And we look at the project knowledge, which is a new integration management area where we are going to combine things related to knowledge. What is the knowledge about? What are we going to do? How are we going to keep the knowledge? We look at monitor and control project work, integrate a change control, and close project or phase. So these are in fact the ways how we are going to build these different elements. How are we going to organize those different process steps? Now scope management is about scope. Uh, you will see that all these steps will, all the processes will start with a plan, scope, plan, management step a process here we are going to describe how we are going to work with all the others what are the principles what uh, are the standing operating procedures that we are going to use so basically we are going to create the model here and in scope management we look at everything related to scope we look at the requirements we look at the scope itself we look at the work breakdown system we validate the scope and we control the scope. All these things come together in scope. So everything related to scope, which is done in planning and execution and monitoring and controlling. We also have schedule management. How are we dealing with the schedule? What are we going to do? Uh, how will we do the calculations for certain elements? How will we uh, or what method will we use for scheduling? programming for scheduling, things like that. And here we have to look at the activities. We have to find the activities from the uh, work breakdown structure. We will find the different work packages and the activities. We have to seek them, uh, sequence them. We have to estimate how long they take. We develop the schedule and we control the schedule. So basically we put everything together to create a project schedule, which is typically represented in a Gantt chart. Cost management, well, it's a very important uh, cost. How much will everything cost? How will we deal with the cost? How will we, uh, what are the principles for calculations? Uh, how will we deal with earned value management? So we have to look at the estimation of the cost. How do we do that? What are the principles? How do we find the budget? And then we have to control the cost. And this uh, process also includes earned value management. We want to know where is the process going? What will be the final cost of the project? And we use earned value management for that. So the principles of earned value management are defined in this knowledge area. We look at quality. We don't look at quality so much in our 10 steps, but we will come back to that. We look at the quality is, which is related to conformance of the requirements, fitness for use, delivering on our promises, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, we have to plan the quality management. What are the uh, different elements? What are the systems that we are using? Are we using Kaizen, Six Sigma, Lean Sigma, other methods? We will have some statistics in it. And what we have to do when we look at quality it's very important to build it in production and design. So basically quality is a proactive approach. Manage quality is a proactive approach. And control quality is in fact control driven, where we try to find what is going wrong with the processes and we try to find ways to improve the processes. 
the main thing we will see later in this lesson is that this is control driven and one of the main goals is to keep the errors out of the hands of the customer errors that go to the customer that can have very big impl uh, implementations uh, let's say big um, causes big uh, problems when a customer has a problem with the product that you deliver to them so it's very important to include quality we look at resources uh, resources uh, management is about uh, human resources and material resources uh, the plan again we put calendars there we put uh, all kinds of elements uh, in the way we are going to deal with the uh, with resources we look at the estimation of the activity resources we look at how to acquire resources because during planning we estimate that we will need certain resources but at the moment that we start with the project we will have to get those resources we look at the team development here we typically look at human resources how to manage the team and finally to control the resources communications management is also one of those topics we don't include in the 10 steps we look at communication how will we uh, deal with communication typically a project manager is about um, spending 90 percent of the time related to communication and we have to also see how we can share information with people all these things are there uh, we look at the technicality of the communications we don't really look at the soft part of communications we're talking about how do we deal with communications how do we avoid avoid problems and so on well risk management uh, we have a risk management plan in place uh, there is an iterative approach to risks and we have to stand st we have to, sorry we have to start by identification of the risk we look at the qualitative and a quantitative risk analysis we look at risk responses we look at how to implement the risk responses and of course we have to monitor we have to see how we are doing these things the next thing is about procurement management now basically uh, one of the elements that i have to say is that procurement management is typically one of the knowledge areas that's least known by most of the project managers it's not 100 percent like that but the reason is very simple procurement is typically done by a different department and the project manager is interfering is uh, communicating with that department they make the contracts basically as a project manager you have to understand how these things work but as a practical experience most of the time you are not dealing with this unless you're working in a smaller company and of course everything depends on the organization of the company it would be good to understand how it works and also when you're in procurement management it would be very good to understand how a project really operates stakeholder management very important it was added in the fifth edition uh, it's closely linked with communications and we start by the identification of the stakeholders we look at plan stakeholder engagement we try to see how can we engage the stakeholders what are the different elements that we are going to use and we have to manage stakeholder engagement we will talk about that later and also monitor stakeholder engagement now when we when we see all these elements here it looks that we have to do so many things that we have to do and basically we have to comply with the principle of tailoring tailoring is basically adjusting the level of detail to the size of the project now when we start with the project what uh, first thing to do is what are the processes that i should use so every project is unique and we have to identify what is necessary now how deep do we have to go um, now each of those processes provide all the information that can be used for very very large projects when you have a smaller projects using all those processes with all their let's say 
possibilities with all their items would mean that you will be investing too much money in it and that's not really good because then the expenses will be too high so when you have smaller projects you have to see what is really necessary how much information do we have to do we also have to see what we can leave out and of course when size and complexity increase the depth and the number of processes that we will use will also increase it's quite logical when the work is more complex we have to uh, let's say protect ourselves against issues so we have to find all the, we have to use all the processes and all their options that they offer to create a good plan to have a good execution monitoring controlling and so on so basically here i wanted to link those knowledge areas to the process steps and we can continue with our next video so i'm looking forward to seeing you there thank you and bye bye